What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is work through five different examples of simple vine variable expressions using the higher root. Basically, I handpicked five examples that are going to cover how to simplify the fourth root, the fifth root, as well as the sixth root. I hope you enjoy. What helps us out is the rules of exponents and the rules of radicals. That's what's going to help us out. So if you guys didn't write those down, make sure you guys have those because even though those are kind of, um, at least the rules of exponents are a review, they're really helpful in this because are these the same? No. The only way I can simplify it is that if they are exactly the same. However, I can use the rules of exponents to help me out. I could rewrite this as the fourth root of x to the fourth times x squared. Would you guys agree with me that x to the fourth times x squared, based on the product rule, is x to the sixth? Yeah. Yes. Now, now I can use my identity element. The fourth root of x to the fourth is x. I can't do anything with x to the fourth x squared, right? So that answer is x squared. Does that make sense? Más o menos. Just make sure, guys, you don't do something like x to the fifth and x to the first, because you can't do anything with that, right? You have to use you have to do your index where it's exactly the same. Okay. Okay. So let's just go through and work this out. First thing we're going to want to do is break it up by applying the product rule of your radicals. So by applying that rule, I'm going to have the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of a to the 24th times the fourth root of b to the 13th. Does everybody understand at least the first step that I did there? Does anybody have any questions on that first one? That's just applying that first rule that I showed you guys. All I did was I took each term that I'm multiplying through and I just broke it up as the fourth root of each one of those terms. Yes? There. That's uh, my native country. We call it quattro. It's a four. What's your native country? Uh, yeah. It's a four. OK. So now the next step that we're going to do is now see if we can simplify each one of these by taking them to the fourth root. So again, what we want to do is see if we can raise each number to that fourth power. Well, fourth root of 16, we could raise that as 2 to the fourth power. Very good. What about a to the 24th? Right. So we could say a to the 6th to the 4th power, right? Because remember, 6 times 4 is going to give us 24, right? But I don't want to write it as a to the 4th to the 6th power because the powers and then my roots would not cancel out. Then what about b to the 13th? Ah, we can't, can we? We're not going to be working with our fractions. So what are we going to do then if we have a number that's not divisible by our root? What we can do is, well, we know that 4 doesn't go into 13, but 4 goes into 12, right? So let's see if we can break this up again. What if I did this? Is that still b to the 13th? Right? Yes. Right? Yes? I'm multiplying. But remember, when you multiply, your variables, you add the exponent. So is this still equal to that? It is. Cool. Now, can, since I have a multiplication, I'm sorry, since I have a product, can I break that up by using the product rule of exponents again, or product rule of radicals? Yeah. So here, inverse operations leaves us with a 2, a to the 6th. And now we can just rewrite this as fourth root of b to the 12th times the fourth root of b. Couldn't you put it as b to the sixth times four yeah. of b? Right, well, I'm not done yet. Um, so yes, we got to simplify this, right? So therefore, we say 2 a to the sixth, fourth root of, and then we can rewrite this as to the fourth power. So we could write b to the sixth to the fourth times the fourth root of b b to the third. Uh, hold on. Yes, to the third. Thank you. I don't know why I was thinking six. I'm sorry? So there, for now we can simplify those. And we say 2 a to the 6 
b cubed and the fourth root of b. Now, the one thing I want you guys to remember and to look at this, though, is a lot of you guys remember whenever we took the square root, whenever we had an even root, but then we had an odd power, right? Do you remember what did we always have to include? The absolute value, right? Now, usually we include the absolute value, and that's still going to be the case. However, in this example, the only reason why we got an odd value, though, is because we applied the product rule. So therefore, we're not going to have to be able to apply the product rule because we know that this value is always going to have to be positive. Bless you. So since the only reason why we got this odd is because we had to break this up by using the product rule, we're not going to have to apply the absolute value symbol because this will have to be a positive. Because what if B, what if B was negative? Well, then, you'd, then you would have had a negative answer, right? So there's no way that your answer could have been negative. All right? So therefore, that's why, it, that's why we don't need to include the absolute value here, because we applied the product rule to break it up. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, again, when we're looking at this, uh, you know, a lot of times when we have expressions with variables and with, um, with numbers, a lot of times we can use that uh, product rule of radicals that I previously told you about. And we can just separate this. This is not necessary. But sometimes when you're like getting confused on everything, or you have a lot of different variables, I like to just break everything up so I can just simplify each and every um, separate like, term separately. Do you remember, we wrote this rule. If you have the product, if you have the root of an of expression separated by multiplication, you can separate it, each one. So therefore, we say, well, can I rewrite um, the fifth root? Can I write 243 as a number raised to the fifth power? And what I would spoke with Denise is, yes, if you guys try, you can write, rewrite 3 to the fifth power. Well, we already have x to the fifth power. That works. I'm just going to rewrite it, though, so I can do everything together. And then can, he, can I rewrite y to the, um, can I re rewrite it? I'm going to, again, I want to use the power rule. Can I rewrite y, um, y to the 15th as something to the fifth power? Yes. Right, very good. Very good. Does that make sense? It's to the fifth power. Y cubed is to the fifth power, right? Yes? You also could have done y to the fifth times y to the fifth times y to the fifth and done all of those separately if you wanted to. However, remember the identity element. n raised to a to the n equals a. So now, five, fifth root of 3 to the fifth power is. 3. Fifth root of x to the fifth power is x. Fifth root of y cubed to the fifth power is y cubed. <coughs> Done. Now I need to make this negative. Now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, a negative number. Ms. McGlynn, you always said negative numbers, right? That's going to be i, right? You can't take the square root of negative 1 because there's no two numbers that multiply to give you a negative 1, right? But remember, that's for the square root. That means square root means what, same, what number multiplied by itself. The cube root says what number multiplied by itself five times. Well, think about it. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Times negative 2 is negative 8. Times negative 2 is positive 16. And times negative 2 is going to give you negative 32. So now, instead of our answer being 2, we can write negative 2 to the fifth power. And then we said we rewrote this as y to y squared to the fifth. Well, now we undo our powers with our roots, and we have negative 2 y squared. All right, so guess what? i still comes into play, ladies and gentlemen, when we're dealing with even roots. i is going to come into play when you deal with a square, um, sorry, square, cubic, eighth root, whatever. Anytime it's even, you cannot take the square root of an even number. However, when it's odd, your, number, your answer is just simply going to be negative. All right? Cool. This is very similar, similar to our last problem that we did, but you're really going to want to write this one down because you might forget it. All right? So you have here, same thing, 6 root 64. Oh, OK. 6 root, we know we can write that as going to be 2 raised to the 6th power. And this could be y to the 3rd power times the 6th. Right? Because 6 times 3 gives us 18. Now, here's where things are going to get a little bit tricky. All right? Now, remember, so far we've just been dealing with the square roots. 
and we've just been dealing with the positives, right? We're not dealing with the positive and negatives. But what I want you guys to understand is, since we have an even power, right, this, this has to be positive, correct? Has to be positive, right? Okay. So therefore, when I undo the square roots, I'm left with 2y cubed. All right. Now, this thing that's going to come into our play, guys, is we said that has to be positive, right? Because the 6 root cancels out. So we know that that value had to have been positive, right? But what I'm trying to say is y could have been, if, if y was a negative 1, would this still have been a positive answer? Yeah, because what's negative 1 raised to the 18th power? positive one, right? Any negative number raised to an even power is going to be even. So negative one raised to the 18th power is still going to be positive. But now if you put negative one, but now if you put negative one into y cubed, is it still even? No, right. So we have to make sure we include just the absolute value of y cubed. So this is when you include the absolute value, if you guys want to write this down. Whenever you're taking the even root, you do your simplifying, and your answer becomes a value raised to an odd power, you have to take the square root, or you have to take the absolute value of it. All right? Even root, answer becomes odd power, have to put the absolute value on it. Write that down, because it's going to be a test question, you'll know, and you'll have to remember that.